name is Terence Metz. I'm the lead curriculum developer for MG Rush. We focus on structured facilitation, the strong emphasis on decision making, prioritization, and decision quality. The lesson you're about to experience is one of hundreds of tools and tips you could obtain from our fast professional facilitation class. Today's lesson is on how to facilitate open issues, traditionally called a parking lot. Most textbooks suggest that you explain the use of a parking lot during the introduction. I did that for a couple of uh, times. I don't do that anymore. It just never gave me a sense of comfort. Notice, here we're in the introduction. We haven't gotten anything done. And I'm already explaining to you how we're going to manage all the stuff we don't get done. And since it didn't make a lot of sense to me, and yet I'm not naive enough to think we won't need one, I've learned to build the parking lot and hide it. So that when the situation arises during the meeting and someone suggests we need to start a parking lot or put that in the parking lot, I'm ready to turn to that easel, typically with something tabbed, and go for lot. Now most of you are too young to know Johnny Carson, but Johnny Carson played a role called Karnak. And if they say we need a parking lot and you want to be all parking lot, the room will go, ooh. <laughs> now you notice we're using a different title. The title here is Refrigerator. We feel that a parking lot connotes a place where stuff goes to rust. A refrigerator, on the other hand, is where you go to preserve and protect stuff. Because no, some of these ideas are really good. Some of them are so big we can cook up a whole new meal out of them. So we prefer using the term refrigerator, but nevertheless, we're capturing that sense of open issues. The first test in managing open issues is a test of relevancy. Be careful. There's a tendency to throw stuff in the parking lot. If you ever get to a parking lot item, turn to a group of uh, smart people and go, what was that? And nobody can remember. And normally that's because we have a tendency to be cryptic. So we're going to tell you right now, avoid acronyms unless they're spelt out at least once in the pre-read or the glossary. And avoid abbreviations, because while they make sense at the time, they may not make sense later. Was that technician, technocrat, technology, et cetera, this one potentially embarrassing. Again, the first test is the test of relevancy, however, and as some issues work themselves out or are less important as time goes on, those are deleted. For issues that remain valid, in this case rewriting our inspection policy, we're typically going to code that in our analysis space, and that coding suggests that we're going to go elsewhere and talk about this in more detail. Now the suggestion here is that we would go to a new sheet of paper, but to keep things moving and to save a tree today, we'll pretend this is a new sheet of paper to more fully describe or discuss rewriting the inspection policy. We have learned that the key to good and effective open issues is a verb-noun pairing. Did you ever get to your honeydew list, a to-do list, like on a Saturday morning, and it says backyard, and you're thinking to yourself, what was I supposed to do in the backyard? Because it was lacking the verb component. So please, consider that verb-noun pairing. And when in fact valid, let's make sure we understand, perhaps more <clears throat> precisely, what is this? That's our symbol for a paragraph, and in fact, in the FAST technique, it's our definition tool, suggesting there could be five further questions to ask about this rewriting the inspection policy. What is it not? Generally speaking, what is it? What are the detailed specifications, characteristics, or requirements expected? Provide an illustration, process flow diagram, and or get examples from the business. Once we understand this open issue, though, we need to know who. Listen carefully to the precision of our rhetoric. We do not ask who in this room will be responsible for this. We've learned from experience that frequently volunteers for this aren't actually going to do the work. They get back to their office and dump it on three people that work for them. What we care about is efficiency, and we know that one to many is far more efficient than many to one. So what we are going to ask is who in this room right now will take responsibility for communicating back on the status of this? And that's a different question than who is going to do it. Once we understand who will be communicating back, we need a better understanding of when we can expect an update. This is to generate a sense of proactivity. Again, it's much better for this one person to contact 10 of us than for 10 of us to contact that one person. Sometimes there are large files involved, Visio files or things of a large nature that suggest email alone is not sufficient. 
we may not need to know where. Where will we find this information? And if you're called upon to isolate where, we would encourage you to consider giving this a file name and a path. And while the path may be SharePoint or something uh, common and understood, it's interesting to facilitate a little discussion around file naming conventions. Let's make sure that everybody that needs access has access to that path. So let's see if there are, in fact, any additional security issues. Having done this and isolated and determined what is the open issue, who's going to be responsible for communicating back, how will that be communicated, where can we find it, and everybody have access to it that needs it, we've done a pretty effective job of managing the open issue. To the extent this is too burdensome, however, and you need a quick hit method, we have another tool or approach that we suggest. It is called a 2 by 4 Many of you in America know that a 2 by 4 represents, signifies a piece of wood. And it's the lumber, it's what we use to build walls frequently, although some people might call these large matchsticks. For us it's actually mnemonic to remind us to facilitate an understanding with this open issue. Just what is it? What's expected? To do what? By when? By whom? And for what purpose? Which is the why question. Why are we doing this? Or sometimes you can substitute benefit. And the reason we refer to this as a 2 by, two by 4 as a mnemonic is to make it easy to remember. As you can see, we have the 2 by 4. That's the FAST technique suggestion for managing open issues. Again, one of hundreds of tools and tips available from the FAST professional facilitation class. Hope to see you there someday. And until then, remember, knowledge speaks.